guys so welcome back to part 13 of our top down construct 3 series it's getting pretty exciting now the, you can see the elements are starting to get thick we've added some sounds in our last tutorial some player attack but today we're going to be focusing on transitions how we go between stages how we go down to dungeons etc so i'm going to demonstrate that uh, in today's tutorial now the first thing you're going to have to do you'll notice i've gone ahead and deleted my character for now and i've added him to a project bank so i've got and added two extra layouts one being a dungeon and i've got and added a tile map so i'll show what that looks like there's my little dungeon. If I play it, I've just done everything as we've done in the previous tutorials. Just a simple dungeon with a little bit of stairs. So I want to demonstrate us going down and up those stairs. So yeah, we can go to stage one. Yeah, you can see the stairs down, obviously, and you saw in the dungeon, we've got the stairs coming up. Then I've created an object bank. This is just going to be used to place objects. This is not a stage. It doesn't have an event sheet or anything as such. It's just for me to keep my objects so that I know they're there. Right, so once you've gone ahead and done that, there's a few things we need to do. So over onto the E main file, we're going to be creating a transition effect because I wanted to have like some sort of fade effect, if you will, if you want to call it that. But moving forward, we're going to also need to create a create player effect as well, so that every time wherever the starting door is, we know where to spawn that specific player. So back to stage one, and let's go ahead and create a new object. And this object's going to be quite critical moving forward now. I'll show how this is going to work. So we're going to go and create a new sprite, and I'm going to fill that with a green color because why not? Let's put that as green, and let's go and set that to 16 by 16, because that's the time map size. Fantastic. Right, so it's disappeared because it's obviously in the shadow layer, so I'm just going to go ahead and prove that, and then select that and change it down to layer zero, and go ahead and hide that again. Okay, so there is our, you could say, trigger point, if you want to call it that. So to make things simple, I'm going to call this trigger door. Trigger underscore door. That's how we know that that is going to be our trigger door moving forward. And we're going to replicate that in sort of different areas. So once we've got that, we need to go and set a couple of instant variables. Firstly, we need to know what is this room. We need to know the name of the room. So while we're transitioning through the different layouts, we know exactly what's going on. So the first one we want to do is create a room. And let's call that a string. And we can leave that empty for now. Right. The next one we can do is an ID, which is vital. We're going to use that as a number. Let's call that ID. And leave that as number and click OK. The next thing we need to do is the direction. Now the direction I'm going to use purely because I want to know if the player, what sort of direction the player is facing so that we know that when he enters a room, we know exactly which animation to play. So we're going to add that to the door as well. So direction, and we're going to give that a string and click OK, right? The last uh, we're going to need is a Boolean and we're going to call that the starting door, oopsie starting door and then uh, add one more and call it void if we need to void the door and we're going to make that a boolean as well fantastic okay so then we've got our sort of perimeter set up down moving forward we then need to go ahead and create you could say over onto our stage one here we're going to have to bring in that trigger door as well uh, on our dungeon so i'm going to go over to dungeon and then over here, as you guessed it, going down to, let's just hide this as well. Going over here, let's go and bring in that trigger door as well. Okay, I'm going to put that over there. Because that's going to be the exit point. So let's do just that. Right, fantastic. And then I'm going to check a starting door because he needs to start coming into this room and you'll use it to exit going out of this room. Okay, and then yeah, we can set it to left. Or in fact, yeah, we can set it to right, because it'd be facing right coming out. Okay, and room here is going to be called, let's go with, hmm, let's go with the stage one, because you're going back to stage one. And the ID we're going to leave as zero. Okay, fantastic. Right, then we go back to our um, other stage, stage one. Double click that, and then we have to go and create another one. The reason why I'm creating two here is because I need the player to spawn the very first time on the stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that again. Over here. And that's the wrong layer again. Let's just move that over to layer zero. Fantastic. And we're gonna say on the start of this game, let our player start here. So yeah, I'm gonna check starting point because I want him to start here. We can go ahead and call this one here dungeon. So I'm just going to call that room dungeon. Let's set that to one is default is fine. This one is zero because there's more than two hit points. 
Then we need to go over to our main file, and there's a few things we need to do. Now, I've made a group here called transitions because this is where we're going to put our transitions in. So let's go and add another global variable. Let's add a global variable, and let's call this, I would imagine, door ID. So we need to track basically the door IDs. Okay, and we'll keep that to zero, and then we can start the player create. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and add the event to spawn the new player. So the first thing we want to do is add. Let's go and add a on start of layout event. So let's go system on start of layout. That'll be our primary obviously objective. And then let's go and do the trigger door. Now we can go sub event and sub event. And let's go trigger door. And we're going to compare an instance variable. So let's go there and say it's ID is equal to door ID. Now this is going to work essentially once we have the door ID filled. Once the variable knows that the ID is one, spawn him at one. That's why we keep that little global variable on the trigger door itself. But because there's a conflict of interest, we need to add another sort of condition, and that's the else condition. Because the fact that we know that if there's two doors, we need him to start at the starting door that I checked. So if you look here, there's the ID that we fall to one, but because there's another door, we are set that we just set to zero. We need to set and that's set to starting door. We need to ensure that that is the door in the else. But if he goes to the dungeon, you'll see this is not only just the starting door, but also the only door in the system. That way it will go on the first condition. Right, so let's go over back to the player and let's add the other condition here as well. And let's say trigger door, check the Boolean obviously, and that is the starting door. Right, so that is our if else statement you could say. So the next thing we're gonna do is system and we're gonna go and create the object. So let's go create the object and obviously you guessed it, we're gonna say it is the player base and then the layer we're gonna to set to stage. So, cause that is our current layer called stage or layer zero, whatever you wanna call it, stage. And this will be the trigger door, trigger door dot X and then the trigger door dot Y. Okay, fantastic. Let's click done. Let's go ahead and copy paste that here because they're really gonna have the same values. And then let's go ahead and then say player animation, set the direction. Let's set the direction. Well, let's just do, yeah, let's set the direction. So we know it just looks nice him coming through. So let's go set direction, which is gonna be set value and it's gonna be direction. And in this case, it's going to be the trigger door dot direction. This is only going to work once we have more than one idle because if you go over to our player now you'll notice that we've only got idle down at this moment in time so it's going to work for idle down but when it comes to up left right we need to go and add those idles so i'll do that in the off screen so let's go ahead and copy that there as well and the last is obviously the animation so in this case we're going to go player set the animation and that is going to be the idle the idle state and then furthermore the and sign and here we can go self because we want that dot direction as we have it there so let's go ahead and just click done and copy and paste that again for yeah right so there it is now this should work although we're going to still need to bring in the pin of the um sort of every tick because now it won't stay with it he's probably going to just stay in the same spot let's go ahead and play that Okay, so there he is, but you'll notice when I move, he doesn't walk because the actual block of the base is walking. Yeah, but we've got it set to hidden. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go and add another one, add a grant, and let's go every tick, every tick. And then we can go player, and we can go, I think it is set position. Yeah, let's do set position, set position. And in this case, it'll be player base.x. And this one is going to be player base dot y. And that should solve our problem. Fantastic, let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so there he is, and you can see he walked and he spawned there. Now this we can do a little bit more seamless. We're not gonna worry about it now, so that he comes out to the right spot, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly do something else. I wanna set this to, this is a little closer here. At the same time, I want to set it to initially invisible and this one as well, initially invisible. And then I want to go to the dungeon and set this one to initially invisible as well. Okay, 
Fantastic. So if we go play now, there is our player. And we're going to go around this side. Obviously, this guy's going to chase us down. Let's just kill him. Oh, yeah, we don't, have a, we don't have a value to kill him yet. And then when we get to the stairs here, we're going to do something. Right, fantastic. So now we know at least that the player spawn is working. This is our sort of, you could say, our player creates, if you want to call it that. That is a vital, you could say, very critical starting point for um, the stages every time we create the player at a specific door. Now it allows us to expand the players. Right, so we can go ahead and I'm going to minimize that. Now on the email file, because I think that should handle our door files. We're going to have the transitions as well as the door. So the first thing that I want to do is the player on, um, let's go and add a new group, obviously. Add a group and let's call it doors. Okay, so this is going to handle all the door logic, essentially. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously add to the doors. We're going to go player base, because we know that that's the base. On collision, is on collision with the trigger door. Okay, done. And then another condition, which is going to be um, that the door is not void. It's not closed. So let's go and say, check a boolean. Let's say the starting door, let's go void. It's not void. So I'm going to have to invert that. Stunning. So on the condition and the door is not void, then now we can begin the um, sort of transition. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is obviously set that a global variable that we have at the top here, because this is always set to zero. So we're going to need to go system set global, set value, and door ID, and this is going to need to be the trigger door, trigger door dot ID, okay. So we're gonna fill it with that value so that we know that it is essentially um, full correctly. Okay, so once that's now done, we next thing we need to do is the, you could say, disable or we don't have to. So we can make it look good in terms of when he goes over the door that we disable him completely. So we can go ahead and do that as well. We just need to make sure we know the name of that group. So we can call it player, let's do it player movement. That way it's it's probably a little bit, it makes more sense. So let's go ahead and say system. And we're gonna go set group. Let's have a look for a group. Stop it. Right, we go set a group active. And in this case, I wanna go player movement. Player movement. And I want to deactivate it because he's now obviously going through the door. Deactivate. Done. Right, so the next part before I do the transitions, you know, the terms of fading in and out of going through these things, let's show you that it actually does, in fact, what it's doing, what the code we've just written. So let's go ahead and just create a wait signal quickly. Let's go wait. And let's just wait one second. And then after that, I'm going to sort of reactivate the player movement. And let's put that down here. Let's go activate because these two values we will keep again. And then we'd go system and just go to the layout. So let's go layout. And let's go, go to layout by name. And yeah, we're going to use the trigger door. So we're going to go trigger door dot room. Because remember, we're passing this value. If you look on the left hand side here, we've got this dungeon. So we know which room we're going to. So effectively, we're going to deactivate, wait one second, activate, and then go to the room, if that makes sense. Effectively, we want the transition between these two to take place, but we haven't built that yet. So we're gonna run that shortly. So let's go and have a look and see if this works. Okay, so let's go and check it out. So it goes. And it should go in without the transition. There we go. And there we go. So there it is, working pretty well. Now, and let's go out again. Fantastic. So you see that delay? That's the second delay that we have. So there it waits one second. That was because we had that on the on the door effect, which is fine because we want to use that to basically do the transition. So the next part we're going to focus on is the transition. Now this can be a little bit confusing because we're going to be using obviously the OPCT with regards to the transition and then the different states to which it is, and then obviously we will go over to that different um, to that different uh, layout. Now if I hop back over onto my main where we've left off. So we know that this works. So we're gonna make one change. We're not gonna obviously have the second delay that you saw here when we cross over onto this onto this little trigger. We're gonna to need to first build up the transition, you could say function. So I've gone ahead and added a transition object. Here you can see just a normal black. If I double click it, it's got two frames. It's got a white and a, and a dark frame. And you can just make that a, any size block really. It doesn't make a difference. Now the next thing we wanna do is add a transition layer to each, obviously each stage. So stage one, there's transition, and then dungeon, there you can see I've also got it as well, the transition, okay. 
So we try and give it that fading look, basically, is really the second part of this tutorial. So let's go ahead, hop over. I'm going to do this as quick as I can, because um, I know it's going to be quite lengthy to understand. So the first thing is let's go ahead and create the new function, add function. And we're going to call this function, uh, let's call it transition. Transition. And let's add ourselves two parameters. Add parameter, first one being the state parameter. Uh, state. And we're going to make that a string. That's because it's an instant variable. On this transition, I've added an instant variable, two of them, state and tag. I want to pass it through here. Okay, so I know which sort of motion of opacity it's in. So let's go here again and call that a string. And let's go call this the tag. Right, because we need to know if it's in or out. If he's going into a door or if he's coming out of a door. Right. Next thing is I want to destroy any transitions that is currently existing. So let's do that first with destroy. Right, fantastic. Then I need to add a sub event if the tag equals one, meaning the frame, then let us change it to white. So let's go ahead and add a sub event. And let's go uh, system tag, I would imagine, which would be compare a variable. Um, and that would be tag is equal to one. Fantastic, so we've got system tag equal to one, right, which is the system state local tag, just to be very clear. But then the next thing is we can obviously set that transition to one, which is what I want to do. So set the animation frame to one because that is our white, obviously. And then let's go ahead and change this up. Right. So the first thing I want to do is the system. I want to go system. I want to create this object, which is that block that you saw. Uh, create the object and let's call it the transition. Select the transition. There we go. And let's put that on the layer. This is vital. Yeah, the layer transmission. Transition. Sorry. Transitions. Okay. Fantastic. Make sure that they are both spelled the same. That's quite critical. So I just want to make sure I've done it. Okay, great. They are the same. So transitions over traditions. Then we need to set the states, obviously. So let's go ahead and say transition state, transition, set the value of state with the value, which is, of course, state, because that is a perimeter. So we're filling our instant variable that's here with the state variable, which is being passed through this function when I call it here. Okay. Same thing we're going to do again with the other one, which is the tag. So let's go set state. Try to make this as simple as understanding as possible. Uh, set the value. So we're going to go call that tag. And we're going to set that with, of course, tag. Tag being our local perimeter. This is local. When it's at the top, it's called a global. OK, so that's the. And now we can go set the, the, the opacity. So let's go transition. And let's set the opacity. So let's go there. Set the opacity and that we're going to set to self, self dot uh, state. It's current state, obviously, because that's what we're passing. State and we can equal to the tag, which we're going to be passing, which in the first one will be out. If it's out, obviously, otherwise run zero to 100. Okay. Right, then we've got the tag obviously equals one. Then we need to set the two states. So let's go and create those methods quickly. So let's go transition state, compare a instant variable. So let's go state is equal to, let's do the first one and let's call it um, out. So that's what we're gonna pass, the out function. So if that is out, let's just go set the PCD because that's all it really is. Transition, set the PCD, set uh, PCD, where are you? PC over here. Let's set that to be self dot opcd. Um, and let's let's because that is out, we're going to want to fade out. So we're going to um, let's plus that to two forty and multiply that by dt. This is sort of a hit and miss here. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. Okay, and then we need to give this. I would imagine that that's the out. We need to do the same. Let's copy that state over and let's do the in as well. If it is the in state, let's make that a capital. In as well. Then let's set the opacity, but instead of plus, let's sub do a subtract the minus value. Okay, and multiply it by dt. Then we can check to make sure. So let's go here and add a sub event. And let's go if the transition. Um, we're going to basically check to see what it's doing. Compare the opacity. If it is greater or equal to 100, because that's what you want it to be, 100, then let's wait. Let's wait. Uh, what We had one minute. We had one second here, which is too long. So let's go wait. 
Uh, let's wait so it looks a bit more sort of 0.2. Let's make that 0.2. Let's wait 0.2 seconds and then obviously the system tag, just pass that system tag through signal. So let's go signal and we're going to call that the transition tag. Transition tag. Right, and then if it's obviously in this one, we need to add a sub event. Add sub event. And if the PCD here is obviously small or equal to zero, uh, compare values, let's compare the PCD. If it is, let's say, let's do it less or equal to zero, then we can just destroy it. And let's go transition, destroy. Right, destroy. Fantastic. Go ahead and run that, Let's see what it does. Okay, so here's our character. So we're hoping to see some sort of transition when we go into that door. And we're gonna go into the door. Okay, not much. Oh, of course not, what am I saying? We need to obviously go ahead and add it here in our, in our sort of door function, which is something I've absolutely clearly <laughs> forgot us. Uh, forgot to do. So let's go ahead and delete this um, wait one second because we're not going to need that. We're going to call that function. So let's go ahead and add function. And in this case, because he's collision with the door, the door's not void. Let's go call the transition. Transition. And now we need to pass the state. So this state is going to be out. Right, out. And the tag is going to be, of course, my layout change. So let's go layout change because that's obviously what we're going for in, in construct itself. Layer change. So let's move that between the two. So we're going to call that and then we need to wait for the signal of this layer change to come back. So we're going to go system, wait for signal. This is type signal. Wait for a signal. And in this case, it's going to be layout, layout. It is changing, obviously. Layout change. Okay, and that needs to go there. So it'll wait for the transition to take place first. It calls it, waits for it. When it gets the signal that the layout has in fact changed, go ahead and activate and go through to the room. Right, so before we just go ahead and test that, just remember on the transitions varietal to make sure that the speed is set to zero. Okay, so let's close that and let's go ahead and test. So there's our player. I've just enabled the shadow for now. And we're gonna go past this guy and we then should see our transition. Boom, there we go, stunning. And if we go back, same thing. Fantastic. All right, guys, so that is it for our tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to be focusing more on the finer bits and clearing up, like I said, enemy movement and attacking animations. We want to make sure that's seamless, as well as uh, a few other objects and opening up chests. And then we're going to begin the huts, which is basically the health bars. Uh, all the animations for the player, I want to get that all sort of tidied up and then I can compile the project and put it in the subscription down below for you guys to download and to use essentially when creating your own RPG but really focusing on the right way to do things and not only that, also understanding the logic as I said to you guys previously. So guys, if you could, if you're new here, hit that subscribe. If you could also give us a little bit of love and hit the thumbs up, we always greatly appreciate it and we'll catch you guys in the next one.